Hey, what's up everyone? I hope you're all having a wonderful day or night. I hope you will enjoy today's video, so let's just get into it. Okay, no, 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 because these filters are unhinged. Absolutely un- Who is that? Who, who is this? Who is she? Like, how, how can one filter make me so angry and so sad and yet so confident and make me immediately want to put myself into a plastic surgeon's office. Do I get lip fillers? Should I get them? No, because we're confident in our own bodies. Okay, literally like three, two, one. This is how I look right now. Let's put her back. Who is she? Who is this? Cause this is not that. If I actually look like this, it would be over for literally everyone else. I am irate. And so into it, I... Ah, uh, this is so frustrating. Yeah, I bet it is. Everyone's losing their mind over TikTok introducing this new filter. Here's an idea. Don't use it. It's funny you're only complaining about this filter now, when every social media platform already had a built-in filter. None of you seem to complain about that, even though you knew how you looked in a video was not the same as what you saw in the mirror. But I think the most important question is this one. What are we doing with this? What are we teaching people with this? Sorry. What are we teaching children with this? Specifically young girls. We're not teaching them anything. Or if we are teaching them something is how to be delusional. But that's not really teaching. We're just pushing them into that direction. And what I think it's worse, we're pushing them into a life of depression. They will look like that on camera, get a fake idea about who they are and how they look, and that entire world will shatter whenever they're gonna step outside. This could just be my paranoia, but what if TikTok knew exactly what they were doing when they introduced this filter? So I'm trying out that beauty filter that everyone's talking about. And it kind of makes me laugh. This looks nothing like me. <laughs> but it's not the filter that I have the issue with. What I have the issue with is what happens when you take the filter off. I mean, it's not good. Yeah, probably not. In most cases, what's gonna happen is, like I said, a whole world of depression. Or the other option, plastic surgery industry is gonna bloom. Guy and girl meet, there's a lot of attraction. They plan on seeing if there's synergy and agree to have a lunch or dinner date and they set the date. Okay. Guy reaches out to confirm that they still have the plans. She doesn't respond. Several days later, she responds claiming that she's been too busy but would like to have lunch later in the week. The guy confirms that he is available, but the girl offers no communication afterwards because she is too busy. Ultimately, here's the question. Should there be a period of communication between two individuals leading up to a date that's nearly a week out or is silence okay and he does the same thing where he confirms the day before again to She's no not avail. into him. This is the classic ghosting thing. She's going to – it's going to come up and she's going to be like, sorry, I'm too busy. Our gener – no. No <laughs> one cannot text back on a phone. You're never too busy to text, sorry, something came up. Like he – she stood him up essentially. Yeah. Like that – he – I don't know who this man is, but he deserves better because – I'm assuming he's around our age and this no this like makes me so mad that people still do this because it's like just grow a pair and tell them that you're not interested anymore so you don't like the string along either no I don't believe in ghosting I don't believe in standing someone up and I do not believe in stringing someone on especially I'm like I cut people off to a T because I think stringing someone along is the worst thing you can do to a person Yep, that's exactly what she did. She was holding on to the guy just as a second option. If you're a guy, don't be the second option. If she stood you up once, why do you even say yes the second time? Second time, it's not even gonna be the last time. She is gonna keep doing the same thing because it's working. It's only up to you to not put yourself into that position. Guys, Anisha has some good advice about how to get a hot chick. What do you like? A medium ugly man. They have me in a chokehold. Anything about him? What else? Just medium ugly? Just medium ugly. He's probably funny, guys. Be funny. <laughs> Well, I'm not, but now that you told me to be funny, I'm probably gonna wake up the next day being the funniest man alive. But hey, you gave me an advice, I'm gonna give you my opinion on it. Make sure when you go on a date with a medium ugly guy, as you call him, let him know from the beginning he's a medium ugly guy, and that's the only reason you're on a date with a guy. If that's not gonna make him fall in love with you right then and there, I don't know what will. French and American dating culture are so different that when I lived in France, 
I had a boyfriend without even knowing it twice. And this is how it happened. Okay, so in the United States, you can go on several dates with someone. Maybe you are you kiss. Some people even hook up. It depends on the person and their comfort level. All without being officially in a relationship. But at a certain point, you usually have a conversation of, do you want to be my boyfriend? Do you want to be my girlfriend? And the big difference in France is that you actually assume that you're together with someone pretty much from the moment that you kiss. So then I moved to France and I started sort of seeing someone and I actually wasn't really that interested in, in a serious relationship and he started telling everyone that I was his girlfriend and I had no idea. Meanwhile, from the French point of view, that was normal. And I sort of freaked out. I was like, why are you telling people I'm your girlfriend? Like, this is so weird. Honestly, I feel so bad now that like I did that, but I just really didn't understand the difference in the culture. And uh, now I know better, but <laughs> at the time I didn't. So overall, the biggest difference between France, you assume that you are exclusive from the beginning. And whereas in the US, you have a conversation to make it official. Yeah, ask a girl if she wants to be your girlfriend, like we did back when we were 13, 14. But you haven't told us which one do you like better, French dating or US dating. Obviously in France, or I should say probably in most of the countries in Europe, people are dating with a purpose, not dating to hook up. So is it safe to assume that you're the one that started destroying dating in the first place? I'm a full-time teacher. And here it is, 8 o'clock at night, and I'm delivering pizzas. I'm doing this because I can't survive on my teacher paycheck. Everyone's talking about all the reasons teachers want to leave. But what about all the teachers that want to stay but literally can't afford to? Date with a purpose, don't have a roster, only date one man at a time, don't participate in hookup culture, state your intentions from the beginning, ignore all that strong and independent lie, find a boyfriend and then turn him into a husband. And of course, learn how to keep him around. And then worst case scenario, he's gonna have two jobs while you do the job that you enjoy. Of course, while complaining that you have to cook and clean. I had to look this up and this is what I found. Beginning teachers in a public school in the US may earn a salary anywhere from around 30,000 to 60,000 a year. I can imagine if you only make 30,000 a year, you're gonna be struggling. But if you have someone who's gonna bring at least 30,000 into the household, while the bills are not gonna increase all that much, it will be at least just a little bit better. Or, you know, be strong and independent and work two jobs. I don't want y'all to know what he looks like. I don't want you to follow him. I don't even want you to know if this boy was missing, I wouldn't even post him. Just know that. That was my exact lie whenever I had a non-existing girlfriend or an imaginary girlfriend. Of course, I was still 13, 14, like I said earlier. Nah, she's shy, she doesn't want to meet you guys, and so on. Now she's no longer imaginary, except she's more like a after 8 p.m. type of girlfriend and a Netflix and chill type of girlfriend. And no, not because there's something wrong with her, it's just that she can't use that filter from earlier whenever she leaves the house. All right, I'm gonna have to read what she said. I'm Ivy, 22 years old here. Well, you're not here, so it makes sense. I come with a perfect taco, <laughs> whatever that means. Five-figure monthly income, super cooking skills. I'll support you in everything you do. And I'm not a pillow princess. Also, whatever that means. Okay, now I'm slick. I'm 46 in two months. And I come with enough life experience to know that if it sounds too good to be true, it only sounds like that and it's not. But that's just me, so I'm gonna say this. If that's really you, you are quite a catch. But would a good catch advertise herself as being the good catch? I'm gonna have to read this one too. People wondering how Eastern European girls get whatever they want in life. And the answer is, our mom's telling us we are better than everyone else since birth. So you're Eastern European now? Do you just identify as one whenever it suits you? Or did you just meditate at that? Obviously, I don't know every single mom in Eastern Europe, but I've never heard anyone saying that to her daughter. Maybe I don't know any better with me being Eastern European, so that would be the case. I know they instill decency, common sense, and good moral values into their daughter and that's pretty much what makes them get what they want. All that other stuff you said, that's more of a Western culture, I think. So let me try to prove my point. My mom, I, okay, I don't, she, she's like, you should start an only for your fee and I'll be your mama. What? Yeah, manager could be one word to describe that position. P, I, M, N, P could be that other word. But at least it's disgusting behavior no matter what word you use. 
I just want a child-free friend who I can go out for a spontaneous margarita middle of the week, but somebody that also understands and prefers to actually be cozy at home sending each other funny memes. I really don't think that's too much to ask for. Of course you don't. What I think is you're looking for a pet to laugh at the funny memes you're sending. My first instinct was to recommend Bumble BFF, but I've heard that you're mean and horrible to each other. And that makes sense since that was an app for you ladies to find a friend. Ah well, since you destroyed that app, maybe go for the pet. That's probably something she's never gonna try again. But anyway, that brought us to the end of the video. As always, I do hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, I still appreciate you for making it this far. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe and I will see you in the next one.